A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets 
by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Lord, be my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star at its rising, and we have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and assert, ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it stopped above the house where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I heard the story of a man and a woman who were being given a tour of heaven by an angel. And as they were going along, they came upon a doorway and peeked in, 
and they saw this crowd of people dancing and drinking and partying up a storm. And they said, who are they? And the angel said, those are the people who, when they were on earth, believed God did not want them to dance and drink and party. They're making up for lost time. <laughs> and they proceeded a little bit further along the line and peeked through a window. And there they saw people decorating a Christmas tree and singing Christmas carols around a manger. And they asked the angel, who are they? And the angel said, well, they are the people who believe that Christmas was a pagan holiday. Now they're celebrating. And they went a little bit further along and they saw an immense stadium filled with people dressed in all sorts of colors and costumes, cheering wildly as down on the field souls were pouring in from all nations and all peoples and all types and costumes and colors. And the angel said, these are the people who thought heaven was only for their kind and have discovered it's for everyone. Because heaven operates according to God's will, not human limitations. In this world, where the clouds and the darkness seem to crowd around us. The cure is in a manger in Bethlehem. The light has come into the world in the most unlikely of circumstances. And we find him and discover that he is Emmanuel. He is God with us not above us or somewhere else, but with us. What a beautiful thought. A friend of mine is a military officer. He's about to retire now. But several years ago, when his son was just three years old, he was on a deployment and talking to his family via Skype. His boy, then three, now about 16, but then three years old, refused to participate in the conversation. He said, I am not going to talk to my daddy on a computer. I want him here with me. With me. God is with us. That leaves no one out. God is with you. God is with me. God is with everyone. Emmanuel. God is with us. And that means North Americans, South Americans, Europeans, Africans, Asians, Australians. It means people who don't think we should dance or drink and people who do. It means people who don't believe in Christmas and people who do. It means Gator fans and all the others. <laughs> God is with us, every one of us. In a few moments, we will together proclaim a great amen as I present the body and blood of the light that has come into the world, the star of Bethlehem, the one who reminds us with his physical presence in our Eucharist that he is with us all the time and with everyone else as well, by the way. 
And with that awareness, if we keep it constant and conscious, our attitudes change. Fears dissipate. And we care for one another in such a way that this life becomes a slice of heaven. And that's good news.